All right, man, peace. You know, brothers, in the aftermath of the Toronto Raptors finally successfully completing their journey, their mission to become world champions and defeating the Golden State Warriors in six games, I received a litany of emails and messages from cats stating that I had to acknowledge that I was quote unquote wrong about Kyle Lowry. I don't believe that I was wrong about my assessment of him, but I do have to apologize to Kyle Lowry because what he showed is that he is a championship level point guard. And, and I stated unequivocally that I did not believe that he was. So I have to give the brother that much credit. I also have to give him credit for coming up huge and pivotal moments in important games in the NBA Finals. He certainly showed the medal that I did not believe that he had. But I also understand that because of the change in leadership on their team, that allowed him to understand his role much better. Because he is a secondary or tertiary option if you have a superstar player on the level of a Kawhi Leonard and that is what he was able to do also with the rise of Pascal Siakam as well as having a great two-way center like Marc Gasol on your team allow Kyle Lowry to fade into the background and just bring extra on offense so I have to give him his congrats I also have to apologize to him because because <laughs> I have so many dudes give me a hard time whether it's on the phone or whatever oh my goodness see you was wrong about Kyle Lowry you was <laughs> I get it. I get it. So all due love and respect to the brother. He was able to transcend. Congratulations to him. And it's always a great thing, especially to see a so-called black man who's able to reach his goals and accomplish his mission. So, of course, they're going to talk about it. And I'm going to chime in. <laughs> we, got, we got fam on set. The longest tender Raptor. And let me say it now. You'll hear it many times. It won't sound any less sweet. The NBA champion. Kyle Lowry, first of all, congratulations. I gotta ask you about leaders set tones, right? All of these three Hall of Famers on set did. What was your mindset? Because we could tell with your aggression you were attempting to do that and did so successfully in the first quarter. Well, I have to stop you for a moment there, sir, because Kyle Lowry was not the leader, and that's my point in this video. What Kawhi Leonard did was he put Kyle in the position where he could be a tertiary option or fourth option. When Kyle played with DeMar DeRozan, he was viewed as the co-leader of the team, and that was too much for him. And that was predominantly my point when I made my original assessments of Kyle Lowry. That being that many times people think that he comes up small in big spots. It's not so much that he comes up small in big spots. It's that he's such an overachiever that we start to expect the productivity that we would expect from a star or a superstar level player like a Dame Lillard or a Steph Curry, and he's not that guy. We hear about some of Kyle Lowry's credentials. He's a five-time All-Star. He's been to the conference finals. He's been to the conference semis. And we say to ourselves, it's Kyle Lowry's fault why the Toronto Raptors are not winning. And he was never a good enough player to be put in that position. But he's such an overachiever. When you look at Kyle Lowry, you can tell that he's not particularly gifted in any one area. He's not a phenomenal athlete. He's not particularly a great jump shooter per se. Certain people might say Steph Curry is not a great athlete. Steph Curry has been preternaturally gifted with an extreme amount of hand-eye coordination. If you ever watch his flings at the end of the half or at the end of quarters, if he does not make the basket from half court or three quarters court, the ball almost unerringly bounces off the rim. I mean, his level of hand-eye coordination is unbelievable. It's, it's to the degree of LeBron's physical athleticism or Michael Jordan's physical athleticism. That's the, that's the degree to which Steph Curry has been blessed with hand-eye coordination. That's why he's able to pull up from 25, 30 feet. And it's almost the same as a free throw if he's left unattended. But just to get back to Kyle Lowry, he's worked so hard that he's placed under the same scrutiny as a star or superstar level player. And he never should have been put under that level of, of microscopic inspection. But once again, I'm very happy for him because he finally was able to perform underneath the, the canopy of playing alongside of a superstar. And that's when his greatness could come out because he can relax now. He does not have to have a mental breakdown. He doesn't have to run to the bathroom like he did in one of those games against Cleveland and quote-unquote decompress. He could look at Kawhi, and Kawhi is going to keep things level. He's going to keep things calm. He's not going to change, and Kyle can gain inspiration from that. That is so important when your superstar is not going to waver. When Kyle played with DeMar, his so-called best friend or best buddy or whatever, DeMar was having mental breakdowns even worse than Kyle's. So if Kyle knows that he's being put in situations that he can't handle, 
how the hell can he gain inspiration to to transcend if he's not playing with someone who can inspire him on on a higher path and a higher way so that's the credit that he truly deserves is that he knew how to assume the position he knew how to say okay this player's far greater than me let me fall in line and just do my role do my job you know it was going to be one of the games where <clears throat> you know we knew the fans would be into it they would be going um, we kind of wanted to me personally i wanted to keep the crowd out of it and uh, i wanted to come out be aggressive and be assertive and uh kind of get to the basket and get my shots up and let me say this the warriors really missed javel mcgee i didn't quite realize how much they were going to miss javel mcgee until they you know they arrived in the nba playoffs especially to the finals and there were so many driving lanes and players were able to get to the basket and there was not a real contest at the rim looney did the best that he could but they really missed javel mcgee and i see that the warriors recently signed willie carly stein and i think that that's going to help them immensely because they're going to need some assistance defensively at the rim every game we've won i've shot double figure time you know i've shot multiple times more than uh 10 times so I knew that was kind of part of the key, just going out there and being aggressive and, and playing basketball, and doing what I do. I mean, Kyle, if, if, if anybody that personifies this, this Raptor team over the years in terms of ups and downs and the perseverance that you personally have shown as a man, as a player, to get better, to play harder, you've had some tough times in the playoffs, yeah. you would not shoot well, and then right after the game, you would go in the gym and keep practicing yeah. and keep practicing. And I thought tonight when you came out, all that hard work, all that ups and downs, you learned, you kept getting better. And you came out tonight and set the tone and really took this crowd out of the game yeah. because they were ready to explode. Yeah, I mean, we knew what they were going to be like. We knew this was going to be a crazy environment. Um, you know, for me, it's just about working hard. And, you know, I've had ups and downs. and. You know, I've had playoff failures, I've had a few successes, um, but tonight was, you know, an opportunity for us. You know, and you they, smell like success. This is a sweet smell of success I right this, now. Uh, I, I think I can live in this smell. Um, but just kind of continue to work hard and understanding that the moment is here, the moment is now. And, uh, you know, coming off of game five, you know, people thought we were going to be, you know, oh, man, no, we, we're a team that stayed level-headed the whole time. Nothing mattered but the next moment, the next possession, the next game. Yes, you guys got that from Kawhi. That's my point. He was able to inject you guys with some championship-level DNA. And that's pretty much all that you were missing. Even if LeBron James was still in the Eastern Conference this year, even had they met up with LeBron in the finals, the Raptors would have defeated them. By far their toughest opponent was going to be Golden State. Now had Golden State been fully healthy, I believe Golden State would have beat them probably in five or six games because just the, the, the amount of copious talent on, on that squad on Golden State, it would have just been too much. In Game 5, you could tell when KD came out there and hit those threes and Steph was hitting shots and, and Clay was hitting shots, it was just too much. It's like walking through a field in broad daylight and being flanked by three of the world's best snipers. It's too easy for you to get hit. And uh, that's the game that we play. Come out, be aggressive, be assertive, and go work. Kyle, the difference between this year and the last couple of years, that you guys got to the conference finals yeah. and stuff, the vibe on the team and just the difference I sensed in you guys as a group. Tell me what it was from the inside. The outside looking yeah. in, it was impressive. Well, I mean, when we came into this thing, we traded for Kawhi and Danny and um, Nick Nurse. They're kind of like just stay in the moment so y'all know y'all know Kawhi in these lines yeah. he's very serious and he's been like that all season just kind of staying in the moment staying in the moment and Nick Nurse uh, he, I said this he only yelled at us twice this whole year and just kind of staying calm and staying confident in what we can do we knew we were you know we got a bunch of professional guys mm -hmm. out there that wanted to win work hard and then I'm going to say this again if Kawhi Leonard makes the correct decision and stays with the Toronto Raptors they could certainly win at least one more championship, and I think that that would be important for that franchise. I really do. And I also think that it would be important for Kawhi. Because, say, if they were to win back-to-back -back titles, that would place them in the NBA pantheon with the Bad Boy Pistons, with the Clutch City Rockets, with the LeBron James and D-Wade Miami Heat. It would place them in that, in that sphere of memorable teams, not dynasties per se, but teams worth remembering. And also, of course, the Kobe Pau Gasol Lakers. So th there's a big difference between winning one and possibly winning back-to-back -back championships. 
if the Pistons were to have done their job and defeated the Spurs in 2005, they would be remembered completely different than how they remember, which is basically, unfortunately for them, a lot of people think of them as a team that got lucky against the L.A. Lakers in 04. They faced an L.A. team that supposedly was beset by infighting and injuries in the finals. Remember, Carl Malone did not play in those finals. People use those excuses, even though it's very obvious that the Detroit Pistons were the better team and they were by far the smarter team. But I've covered that in other videos. Point being is this, Kawhi should re-sign with the Toronto Raptors and do his best to win at least back-to-back -back championships there, maybe even three straight. The Lakers are always gonna be there. He's only 28 years old. He can go sign with them in 2023 or something like that and play with AD and take their franchise to another level. We traded for Mark, that just added to the experience of everything else. You know, you know, I look at the, the stat sheet here in this game, and you had a lot of guys step up. Van Fleet played yeah. big, Ibaka, uh, Siakam, 26 points. Kawhi Leonard obviously coming in gets a lot of credit, but I don't know if you get enough credit. I felt during the regular season, you kind of allowed these guys to blossom. You empowered. Well, that's his job. He's the point guard. It's the job of a good point guard to empower a team that has a lot of talent. That's where Kyrie Irving came up short, and that's what I've mentioned in numerous videos. Kyrie views himself as a six foot two Kobe Bryant. So that Mamba mentality is always going to tear teams apart unless you have a strong coach. The coach on the Boston Celtics, Brad Stevens, was not strong enough to rein in the guys. It was his job to tell Kyrie Irving to cut the shit out. It was his job to tell Jalen Brown and, and a lot of those other players, Tatum, Hayward, what their roles were going to be, what their defined roles were going to be. It's very clear that the moment was a bit too big for Brad Stevens. Fortunately for the Raptors, the moment was never too big for anyone on that team or the coaching staff, especially Nick Nurse. That's why I give Nick Nurse a lot of credit. He certainly handled his business. Tiago, you in some ways took a step back, more of a facilitator. Did I, am I seeing that right? Was, yeah. that, was that intentional? I mean, it was, it, was part of, it was part of the growth of our team. Um, you know, we've had failures. So at the end of the day, you got to figure out how to be a better basketball player, a better teammate. And last year, I kind of took a little bit of a, a backseat. And then this year, listen, I want to come in and do whatever the team needed me to do. Um, Pascal, growth this year was been, has, unbelievable. You guys have watched yeah, it all yeah. year. Kawhi coming in, I wanted to make sure he knew that he was the man. Like this was, you know, Kawhi, you are our guy. You are the guy that's going to be the man. And you know, Hey, brother, self-awareness is essential. Good for Kyle Lowry for understanding that. Certain cats out there might say, well, what was he supposed to say? Of course, hey, there are a lot of, <laughs> there are a lot of people in this world who lack self-awareness and are delusional. And it costs them a lot of the success that could be coming to them if they just knew what their role was and what they were best at. See Kyrie Irving. For me, just kind of like being a, being a point guard and being professional, understanding the moments that we're going to be in. I'm going to need everybody. We're all going to be in this thing together. So we're going to have to fight together. So everybody has to be feeling good. Kyle, when you sit there and you look at this team, there's no way you could win without trust in another. But there's no way that Fred can be as comfortable as he is and aggressive and confident if he didn't trust that relationship, I'd imagine, that yeah. the two of you have. Can you take us to that and did you speak to him when he was going through some of those slumps um, as he was waiting for his baby because i think everyone at home <laughs> wants to have babies now just so they can shoot um freddie has worked extremely hard to get to this point um he's skip baylor said that fred van fleet <laughs> skip baylor said that fred van fleet was the real mvp of the finals <laughs> he said hubie brown even said it Hubie Brown just voted for Fred Van Fleet because Hubie Brown is smart to know that everybody else is going to vote for Kawhi Leonard. So Hubie Brown is like that, that great grandfather who wants to make sure that all of his grandkids and great grandkids know that he acknowledges them and their contribution. That's the only reason why Hubie Brown voted for Fred Van Fleet. Hubie didn't really think that Fred Van Fleet was the MVP of the finals. Cards come from Rockford, Illinois, you know, the hard the slums and just worked hard and through his shooting slumps it doesn't matter for our team as long as we're winning as a group nothing none of that matters we know we'll come back around because of the work that he puts in every day he's in the gym shooting every day he's in the gym working on his handle and as a group when you see your guys shooting every day working on floaters threes free throws you're confident in what they can do and you know freddie had a baby and 
I think he's I think he made like 43 cents, yeah. so uh, the key to success is having babies in the playoffs. Hey, I'll tell you what, there's going to be a lot of I'm people cool. in Toronto making babies tonight, I promise you that. <laughs> hey, enjoy it, enjoy it. Uh, before you leave, I want everyone to, to know this about you. Yeah. Uh, you know, there have been a lot of great players that have played and wore the Raptor uniform. Yeah. But the Raptors have never had a great or better leader than you over the time that you've been there. I appreciate so that. I, like I would agree with that because I wouldn't consider Vince Carter a leader. As a matter of fact, I would say that Vince Carter is arguably one of the top 10 greatest disappointments in the history of the NBA. But that's a whole other video for another day. Of course, I would not put him number one because he has been able to last in the league for 20 plus years and he's had a series of personal successes, so on and so forth. But when you look at the things that Vince Carter was gifted with, he should have won at least three or four championships. He really should have. But when you look over the course of the history of the Raptors, Kyle Lowry certainly deserves credit for being one of the great leaders in the history of their franchise. I can't put Kawhi above him per se because he was only there for one year. But the growth that Kyle Lowry has, has shown, he certainly deserves recognition for that. So good for Isaiah Thomas. And we also know that one of the reasons why Isaiah Thomas is shouting out Kyle Lowry is because Isaiah Thomas knows that he was one of the people on television lambasting Kyle Lowry and deservingly so. I'd like to just say to everybody that the best leader over the 25 years that the Ronald Raptors or the 24 years that the Raptors have been in existence has been you. So congratulations. That's a huge compliment. I appreciate it. And that's real talk. Thank you. I appreciate that. That's yeah. real yeah, talk. I don't know how much that means to me, y'all. Like, <laughs> no, no, coming no, no. from this legend? Yeah, no, no, no. Come on, I mean, man. there may be better players, but in terms of leadership. <laughs> I appreciate it. I said, Tom, why you got to throw that little dart? There may be better players. <laughs> there hasn't been a better leader than you, Kyle Lowry. Thank you. I appreciate and congratulations. It. Thank you. I'm happy for you, Thank you, Coach. Congrats, I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Kyle Lowry, the champ on set. We get a chance to the sweet smell of success. go from the sweet <laughs> smell of success. So once again, good for Kyle Lowry. Once again, I have apologized. So a lot of you cats have been messaging me and emailing me. You can please take that into account, okay? Congratulations to Kyle Lowry. It's great that he's been able to climb from the depths that he's been in, especially in many of his poor playoff performances in the past. So, peace.